Welcome, welcome, welcome to hour two of As Goes Wisconsin. Calvin is on the board. Carol Kane across me in the studio in downtown Waukesha. And we're always delighted to have our next guest join us. He is a registered life relationship career coach who draws on his clinical training and counseling psychology to help us improve our relationships and achieve our goals and generally fix our lives. Dr. Michael McCutcheon, good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Good to see you. How are you two? I cannot hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Now we can hear you. Oh, you can. Okay, good. How are you? Good. Hi. Excellent. Have you talked? Um, to have you talked to Mama Kristen? Yes, I have. And also, I heard that one of, I was listening to the show a little earlier, one of uh, your listeners, or maybe a lot of your listeners, it sounds like wants to... Uh, ship me off to Washington to go yep. to go deal with those. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm flattered that you think that I could uh, uh, deal with those people and, and make any headway. That's really kind of you to think that my talents are that good. <laughs> but I'm also a little a little offended. I want to hang out with you all. I don't want to go up there. It's, it's, uh, it's honestly, it's a little scary. I was I was watching the news and I saw um, what Carol was talking about uh, the Lauren versus Marjorie face off. And I was thinking, can you imagine being in the same room with those two at the same time and being no. in between them? That would be like that. Can you that would be just like being between um your two wildest relatives at Thanksgiving, but every day at work. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that just I, I I would I would uh I would quit. I would, well I, and, I, and, 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 <laughs> I and I think you're far too I think you're far too kind. I do. I think. I think the House Republicans need some really tough love and they need someone like Carol to go in there and just <laughs> and scare them straight. You know, I, it's like if you guys don't figure out how to get along, I'm taking away your iPads right. and your phones right. and right. you're grounded. That's yeah. that's my first step is just to sit them down and go, you guys look like jerks. Stop right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, first of all, Bobert will pull pull a gun on you. So I, I'm not. I'm right. scared. I'm scared of Bobert. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think my my move would be. Do you remember when you were young and they would and they would teach you the uh, the tornado drills and you'd have to crawl under your desk and like a little ball. That would be my move when these two are fighting. I would just go, let me know when it's over. Somebody tap on the desk. You know? <laughs> That's hilarious. When it's, when it's safe to come out. Let yeah, me know exactly. when it's safe to yeah. come out. I'm just like, is that, who's that whimper? Is that, is, is that, Dr. Is that Dr. Mike whimpering <laughs> underneath there? Just like somebody. That's come, hilarious. Yeah, somebody's, somebody give him a Lunchable and pull him out of there when, when, he's, yeah, when he's ready. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, if you ever, ever have any questions for Dr. Mike, you can always text them at 844-967-2789 or send us an email at asgoeswisconsin at civicmedia.us. So are we ready to dive into this dilemma? Let's do it. What do we have okay. today? Dear Dr. Mike, I'm a 28-year-old guy and I've been with my living girlfriend for almost three years. I love her a lot. She's definitely my best friend but I've always doubted if I've ever been in love with her. I think she knows this because she is the only one who talks about getting married and having kids together. She typically has to pursue sex and intimacy, and she even jokes about loving me more than I love her. I just don't want to lose her or her family who have now become my family. What should I do? Should I be satisfied with settling down and marrying my best friend, or should I break up my calm but boring home so I can try to find a relationship that feels more passionate. Well, that's a tough one. I mean, if you don't know that you're in love with her, it, that's the biggest red flag I've ever, I've ever heard. What do you think, Dr. Mike? It is a, it is <laughs> a big red flag. I mean, well, first, first of all, I, as a 28 year old, um, young man, I, 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 uh, I applaud the the honesty to to even look at oneself and say this is how I'm feeling, right? Uh, as opposed to just sweeping it under the rug, because it sounds like a lot of things are actually going right in the relationship to make it last for three years and right. say this is my best friend and we're living together. It sounds like there's a lot of good things going on there, and it'd be very easy to say no, 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 no. Everything's good. Everything's great. Uh, love her, love, love, love her family. Let's just do it. Um, so, you know, good on you for looking at your your own stuff there and being honest. Carol's right. It is certainly um, a bright red flag uh, that you're not in love with the person. You should probably know that 
after three years in there. Um, I will also say too, and I would love to hear what you two think about this, is that a relationship by definition um, has multiple people involved in it. So perhaps to take a little bit of pressure off of our, our, our listener here, maybe this isn't just your decision to make. I, I, might, I might bring this up to your girlfriend, to your partner, right? Because perhaps it isn't just about you and you saying, do I want to do this? And should I do that? But maybe she doesn't want to be in a relationship where she's only doing the sexual pursuing. And maybe she doesn't want to be married to somebody who's just quote unquote, her, her best friend. And she, maybe she doesn't want to, you know, have a quote unquote, um, you know, what would he say? Calm, but boring. Calm, home. but boring. Yeah. You calm know, but boring. Like, you know, let's assume they're the same age, right? So she's like, you know, she's, you know, she's been in this relationship since she was 25. So she's going to be, you know, God willing, you know, around for, you know, you know, 50, 60, 70 more years, right? That's a long time to be with, you know, to maybe she wants to be in love, right? And she wants to be, have somebody be in love with her and, and have and, some and, passion. And have someone, yeah. And have someone desire her. Right. And so I think that's something that, that maybe we should think about here too, that, um, with all respect to our to our listener, that it's not just about um, sort of what you want. I think the things um, that are important to us, um, it's important for us to weigh what's important to us, right? Is it important for me to know that uh, that I can come home to a secure, loving, predictable home, and that I'm going to have somebody who's going to um, you know, be my best friend and be my teammate and be a great co-parent and all those sorts of things. And I, and I do love their family and I'm not like, oh gosh, you know, what are the in-laws going to do this week? And are they going to, you know, that's, are, are those things the most important or is passion and excitement and I want to tear your clothes off and I want to just know every single thought about you because you're so interesting. Is that the most important thing? I can't answer that for you. You have to answer that for yourself. Like what's, what's most important to you. But I think the big thing here, Jane, is that we should be asking the partner what she wants as well, because we we nobody has the right to sort of rob that um, from somebody else. You know, if she wants to have that feeling and she wants to have that relationship, and you cannot be secretly keeping that. And I, I I'll, I'm going to turn this over to you two in a second, but. Um, I'm spitballing here a, a bit, so, so stick with me. But it does kind of remind me a little bit of almost somebody who's in a relationship with somebody, um, you know, maybe decades ago, um, who was closeted in a way, right? A lot of people married their 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 best friends, like their best gay guy friend, and didn't know it, right? You know, right. and and, right. and they had a, a fantastic life, right? We had all these things in common, and we had kids and all that sort of stuff. But there was this secret going on un underneath. And that's not right to not tell that person that you're married right. to, that you're keeping this thing from them. That's not that's not an OK thing to do. Um, and so I think this guy should, in a sense, quote unquote, come out, if you will, and say how he's feeling. And that if she's OK doing that and he's OK doing that, maybe we should we should have a conversation out in the open about it. Dr. Michael McCutcheon is our resident life coach. If you ever have questions, you can Text them at 844-967-2789 or shoot us an email. The one thing that stands out for me, though, Dr. Mike, is the whole thing about passion. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's important, but I also, this might make me very unpopular, but passion is not sustainable. It doesn't, mm, yeah. it doesn't last. And right. quite frankly, and here's the bad part, monogamy is boring. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, but it is. Yeah. And and I I I understand where at least at the beginning of a relationship, the oh, I want to rip your clothes off and yeah. her all of that. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna fade. That's gonna it fade. fade. That is sure. gonna fade. Sure. Yep. And mm -hmm. and you have to have something stronger to build a long term relationship on more than just that. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. See, Definitely. I I think there's a fear factor coming into play here too a fear of um complete and utter commitment when it comes mm. to a passionate and the reason i say that is because I, that happened to me that was my relationship i knew i was in love with lou but he mm. never really said it 
until later on in the relationship. We dated for four years. And there was one time when I was supposed to meet him someplace and he stood me up Uh-oh. and I found him at my uh, at his friend's house. And he was just like, I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid wow. of getting hurt. And I'm like, well, don't worry about that. So I think maybe with this guy, too, there is a fear factor that comes into play that he's afraid of the com- complete and utter commitment. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not a life coach. It sounds like there's some, some conversations that need to go on here, don't you think? Yeah. Between the two? It sounds like he's been harboring some things to himself. And uh, the things he's saying to us here, I would have a hunch that he's been saying to his friends. Yes. But he's probably not saying directly to his partner. Oh, That's I'm my sure hunch. of it. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah, you make it, you make an excellent point. And you have to be, nobody likes hard conversations. Nobody wants to, you know, hurt the other person in the relationship. But as you said, keeping these secrets is almost worse. It mm-hmm. is worse. It is worse, right? Than having a, a direct, honest chat right. about it. The one thing I really like about this conversation um, in conjunction with, I think the last one or the one before is that we know that outside of Carol's um, coaching office, it will just say on a shingle run. Run. And outside of Jane's, it says (laughs) monogamy is boring. I love it. (laughs) It's just great. We've got got your catchphrases down. I'm going to have so many clients. I'm not going to know what to do. Absolutely. Party at Jane's house. Monogamy is boring, y'all. <laughs> Bring your keys. No. <laughs> Dr. Michael McCutcheon is our resident life relationship career coach, draws on his clinical training and counseling psychology to help us improve relationships and set and achieve our goals and generally fix our lives. We love having you on on Fridays, Dr. Mike. Thank you so very much. We will see you next week. Thank you. Always a, always a pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Stay close. We are coming up against the break. We will be right back to talk about Jump Around, baby. Big game in Madison tomorrow. This is As Goes Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. (laughs) Jane Matmare in for Kristen Bry. Calvin is on the board. Carol Kane is here across from me in our studio in downtown Waukesha. Big game for the Wisconsin Badgers tomorrow. Uh, They are taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes at Camp Randall at 3 o'clock. Before we get to that, though, I want to back up a little bit because we had a couple texts come in, both about Taylor Swift. We were talking about her movie, her era's movie has opened uh, as of yesterday, and the enormous amount of money that's expected to, to be generated from that. And we were talking about just how much money does one person need? So Lynn from Oconomowoc checked in on the text line and said Taylor Swift gave out bonuses of more than $55 million to her staff in August of this year. Wow. Okay. And I'm sure she's got a great big touring company. Of right? course. Of course. Probably so, 17, 18 buses. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty great because someone was wondering whether or not she would donate some of this cash to uh, to charity. Right. So apparently she she does do that and has several foundations as well. If you look into from the uh, 715, if you look into Taylor Swift charities in details, she donates to many, many different ones. Okay. So, great. And then we just had Dr. Michael McCutcheon here to talk about this 28 year old guy who's been with his girlfriend for three years. She's his best friend. Right. But is lacking in passion. Mm-hmm. He and doesn't know if he's in love with her. Doesn't know if he's in love. Um, Andrew from Verona on the text line. I think a lot of people have a warped view of what love is. It's not like what you see in the movies or relationships on Instagram. Absolutely. That's for sure. Right. Right. And there is no such thing as a soulmate. Everybody settles. To some extent. To uh, Yeah, to a certain extent, I would say so. Yeah. Nobody's nobody's perfect. No. Except for, well, maybe you. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm as crooked as they come. (laughs) (laughs) But you embrace it, and that's important. I got to own it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, So tomorrow's game. Yes. Big, big game at Camp Randall. The weather is going to be not great. It's going to be horrible. It is not going to be good. So make sure you bundle up. But you started talking about the origins of the whole jump around thing. And if you've never been to a game at Camp yeah. Randall, you probably don't even know what this means. It's it's actually the 25th anniversary of jump around. Ah, And so it, it happens right before the fourth quarter and the entire place just erupts. So I was just kind of curious as to like, when did this start? What, 25 years ago, why did it start? Right. So it was born October 10th, 1998. 
when Wisconsin played Purdue in their homecoming game. Okay. And apparently what happened was um, one of the guys on the team was complaining about how they needed better music in the stadium and things like to, that. To perk, perk up the fans. Right, perk up everybody. And his um, his roommate bartended at a local bar in Madison when the House of Pain song came on. Okay. And he witnessed how the entire bar completely changed and how it was just this, it exploded and everybody's, you know, having a ball and it's just, it, it, the song kind of lends itself to that. To, to party for sure. Right. The only thing that I, every time I, so they, then the next Saturday, they decided to pump that in into the into the music lineup at the game. Right. And uh, at the at the start of the final stretch, the speakers played the House of Pain song and the stadium was lifted. Everyone joined in with the catchy lyrics of Jump Around, according to the uh, Wisconsin alumni situation. And it's been around ever since. The, and I remember the first time I witnessed it, I was like so worried about the structural integrity of I, the stadium. I bet. I was just like, oh, my God. But even. Everybody does it. Like, I don't care how old you are. <laughs> everybody does jump around. And it is so much fun. And you, the, the players on the sidelines. Oh, do well, they really? You know, sure, they all get involved. Bucky's in there. And, well, you know, you know, Ted Perry was a Bucky Badger. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, they were just all participating. And it really is fun. So it's the 25th anniversary of the jump around. And I think... I mean, it's one of the most iconic um, college football events. Yeah. I don't think any other college does it. If they if they do, then they're copycats. Because we, that's we were start, first. We, yeah, we. <laughs> and didn't they actually have to check? They, I think at one point, someone checked with the engineers who built Camp Randall just to make sure that it could withstand right. all these thousands of people jumping up and down at the same time. And the guy who, who was, a, you know, very um, involved in building Camp Randall. He said, I put a lot of steel in there. It's going to be fine. <laughs> but it, what I think is funny, it's as uh, this, I looked up this article, Everlast, the House of Pain frontman paid a visit to the Badgers in 2022 for the Maryland game, thanking Wisconsin for keeping the song alive for 30 years. Wow. He got, uh, he got to experience the enthusiasm, according to ESPN. That's cool. That's very cool. That is. That's great. Well, good luck, Bucky Badger. When you take on the Iowa Hawkeyes tomorrow, three o'clock yep. at Camp Randall, and we will all be virtually jumping around with you right before the start of the fourth quarter, you said. Yeah. And I'm um, going to be in the confines of my warm, dry home. I hear so you. Good luck. I hear you. Stick around. We have the bottom of the hour news coming up next when we come back. Tim McCormick. Tim McCormick from the Harley Davidson Museum is going to be here. They have some great, great stuff. Coming up over the next couple of months, if you've never checked out the museum, you're going to want to after we talk to Tim. So stay close for that. You are listening to As Goes Wisconsin. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. Jane Matinair in for Kristen Bry. Calvin is on the board. My guest host, Carol Kane, with me in the studio in downtown Waukesha. And we're so happy to have joining us from the Harley Davidson Museum, Tim McCormick. Hi, Tim. How Hi, are Tim. you on this Chilly, rainy Friday oh, the October, Friday the thirteenth. Right, it, it's matching that Friday the thirteenth mood with this rain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely got that vibe. But <laughs> uh, we haven't talked in a number of months. But you guys always have tons of stuff that are going on at the Harley Museum. So why don't you take us through what's what? It's October thirteenth. We still got a couple of, uh, a lot going on yet this month, right? We do. Yeah, it's funny how fast October is flying by. Uh, but still here on campus, loads to be doing, uh, especially this weekend. Uh, we're also celebrating the museum's 15th anniversary this year, in addition to obviously the 120th. I hope everybody had a great time there. Uh, but uh, every 15th of the month, you can get a four pack of tickets for just $15. Oh, uh, wow. So we have an October 15th coming up on Sunday here. We're very excited to be opening up our doors. Just go to hdmuseum.com to learn about that offer. But I don't know if you've got a better value in the city right now. Four tickets to the museum for just 15 bucks. That's terrific. And as Carol was pointing out before you joined us, it's really a wonderful experience. It is. If, I if, loved it. it. Even if you're not a big fan of bikes, I think just the whole 
uh, what Harley did for Milwaukee and and what it brought to Milwaukee. That that history alone is worth checking out. But think- and you know. One of my favorites, I'm sorry, Tim, I didn't mean to step on you, but maybe it's just because I'm a woman, but that whole section of the women of Harley was yes. fascinating to yes. me. Yes, yes. We've been doing a, uh, we're, we're, we've got a very, we've got a concentrated effort that we want to get more of those voices that may not have been always represented into the museum here. Uh, our, our curatorial archive staffs have, have a thousand stories from which to choose. We're just trying to rotate those in to get a little more exposure there. Uh, but yeah, no matter if you're a fan of Milwaukee, if you're a fan of history, if you're a fan of design, just about any way you approach the collection, you're going to find something that's fun for you. Tell me about the um, inaugural Bark and Barbecue. Yes, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> I'm in the can room right now, which is located right next to uh, Motor Barn Restaurant. Uh, they've got plenty of room for the lunch crowd if you want to come on down and join us. But I'm looking at setup here, and we've got some troopers uh, in the rain here that are getting everything set up for us. I'm seeing some little doggy fences. I know we're going to have some off-leash areas. There's a ball pit, I'm told. I'm not sure what that looks like or how that's going to be set up. Um, but no matter, rain or shine, that event will be hit, taking place tomorrow. It's our first ever, so we're not sure what to expect. We're, we are doing the rain dance to keep it away. For sure. We know, we know it's going to be a doggone good Saturday. Oh, nice. Nicely <laughs> done. Uh, tomorrow from noon to four on the grounds of the Harley Davidson Museum campus with more than 30 vendors, numerous activities for you and Fido and admission is free. Milwaukee loves free. Yes, we do. <laughs> and if you're interested, attendees can buy an upgraded experience by becoming a VIB, which is very important, Barker. There you go. <laughs> you did planning your homework. Stuff, Nicely done. Planning for stuff like that must be so much fun. It's like, what can we do that will make everybody laugh? Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love our four-legged friends, right? Exactly. Come on down. Get some of that pet therapy. I'm just wondering about uh, dogs reacting to motorcycles. And I've seen I've seen somebody around town, and I don't know if they're still with us, but there was a guy who used to ride around in Hills Corners all the time that is, had his German Shepherd on the back of his bike. Oh, he used to be parked outside a state fair all the time. Yeah. So yeah. Th- so there are certainly dogs that are motorcycle fans. Right. 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 But I would think for some, I could just see a Chihuahua, you know, freaking out <laughs> next to a, 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 a road glider, you know, road king or whatever. As our good friend has proven, all dogs can get along with Harley Davidsons. We, we we don't we don't expect any issues. And no lie, I just saw him with his with his German Shepherd here on campus yesterday. He was oh, rolling seriously? around in motorcycle plaza here. Yes. Oh yes. no, kidding! Oh, that's hilarious. That dog is so chill. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that dog is so chill, man. He just he, is, he just sits there. He's the essence of a Harley rider. Yeah, he just know? yeah. So, Tim, talk about what you've got. Now, that's for this weekend, and that'll be fun. We'll have a great yep. time. But you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Like, you've got stuff for Halloween and everything. Yes, yes. Uh, we always do our Skulloween uh, bike night. Uh, try to uh, have that the last Thursday of October. Time it as close as we can to Halloween. Always a favorite of ours, our, our bike night regulars, who, who unfortunately might have been without bike nights for about a month there. It's a nice way to get a little fix. Maybe the weather could be even cooperating that you could be riding down for that. Um, but costume contests, you can win great prizes from the museum, including campus-wide gift cards. We have a carving contest. Make sure to bring your carving skills for those jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, fire pits, if it does get a little chilly for us. But just one of the best Thursdays, I think, of the year. That'll be taking place October 26th this year on a Thursday. Tim McCormick is our guest from the Harley-Davidson Museum. And we're talking about all the various things they have going on over the next couple of months. And I was thinking too, Tim, this could end up being one of those falls where we have a day like today and then come the Thursday before Halloween, it's going to be 85. It's Wisconsin could and we brilliant. just we just don't know how this is going to go. Right, exactly. exactly. Um, what else What else should we be putting on our calendars? So uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with So Far Sounds, but that's taking place this Thursday. It's a little pop-up concert. They haven't revealed who's going to be performing here. But we are hosting three bands on Thursday, October 19th, in the museum, in our brand new experience gallery. So you'll have a chance to grab a beverage, listen to some great tunes. I think they said, we've been needling them internally to reveal who these bands are going to (laughs) be. 
but they said they would have to kill us if they revealed that information. You understand how that goes. Absolutely. Uh, so I think about 36 hours, they might reveal what those three bands are. They've been putting on an incredible group of performances. So we're expecting no less here this Thursday at the world's only Harley Davidson Museum. Very cool. I, uh, I gotta be honest with you. I love motor. I do. I've been there. See, I've been there multiple, multiple times. And I just saw that you're going to be holding like a trivia. Oh, there you go. Motorbike you're going to be holding yep. like a trivia contest. And I think I'm going to have to check. Yeah, I'm terrible at trivia, but I'd like to get, <laughs> throw my hat in the ring. You know, I can't I, believe that. I think you've got a, a many a nuggets stored up in that brain of yours there. <laughs> both, of, both of us, Tim, have, have years and decades of useless knowledge. Just <laughs> <running around there. laughs> so we, when are you having trivia night at Motor? Yeah, we we partnered with Geeks Who Drink, uh, and they've they've done a couple of events around town. Uh, so they curate all the questions that'll be being asked. Anybody can come on down every Wednesday. I'm right here in the cam room where it's going to be taking place every Wednesday. We just introduced it last Wednesday for our first installment. You can come as an inv individual. You can come as a team. No advanced registration required. And again. A lot of great prizes available there, including tickets, museum gift cards, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, come on down, test your knowledge. It's not all motorcycle related. It is general, uh, so you don't have to be a Harley enthusiast to win some prizes. What time, what, what, as an old person, what time does that start? I believe that'll be, that's six to nine here. That's there not, you go. I could make that. There you go. You I can, can do that. I can, can be wait till 8 o'clock. Well, and you know what? While you're down there, you have to have something to eat because the food is outstanding. Just, it's outstanding. What have you had that, that, that sticks out with you? Well, I see, I'm kind of boring. Just in the fact that if I see a burger, I have to have the burger. But I've had their chili, too. The chili is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Good and, on a day oh, like you know today, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And go down tonight beforehand because their fish fry is out of this world. There. I've said it. She's available for endorsements. <laughs> <laughs> we are recording this, right? Yes. Yeah. It'll be on the podcast. For yeah, sure. no, the fish fry is all you can eat, and it is outstanding. That's, available that's all day on Friday. So if anybody's getting hungry over the lunch hour here, you can get your fish, fish fry fix a little early. Boy, that's high praise because, you know, we're, we're very competitive fish fryers in this town. So... <laughs> Yeah, no if, kidding. If you can get an endorsement like that, that's pretty great. Well, and you know, I have to, I would be remiss if I didn't say, because I'm so proud of the Harley heritage here in Milwaukee, that I have multiple Harley jackets, and every time I wear them, if I'm out of town, because I, I like to take them because they're durable, you know what I mean? Every time I wear one and I'm out of town, somebody is going to stop me and talk about how great Harley Davidson is. And they always will say, where did you get that? And I'm like, I'm from Milwaukee. I got it at the Harley Museum. So there. Right? <laughs> no, I would be remiss if I didn't say how proud I am to wear that jacket. And you my must, jackets. You, you must find the same thing, Tim, when you travel around the country. Yeah, I, I was I was actually in Charlotte uh, on business. We, there was a great motorcycle show there, uh, the congregation show. Um, so I was doing a little work. But as I was out and about uh, throughout the night, uh, I, I was I was actually at an Irish pub, just brought a brought a book along and thought I would just have a chill night by myself. But I was wearing some Harley gear and had people unprompted that had to start conversations. Oh, I own six in my garage, this, that or the next thing. It's great to hear all those stories and where the motorcycle can take you. Yes, it is an amazing machine, but it's the adventures where you go on that Harley Davidson that that really stays with you for a lifetime. I'm sure, and the people that you meet. Yeah, and it's it's a brotherhood, it's a sisterhood unlike any other. Even even language barriers can be overcome if you're both talking about how beautiful that Harley Davidson is. Uh, I just find it fascinating too. Like when you have the first of all, I was so honored to MC that Harley 100th. It was a huge honor for me, stand on that huge stage and watch those people come in. But I do find it fascinating the. The internationality, if yes. you will, of Harley. Yes. And I, when you had the 125th and all, I was, the German guys were being interviewed and they <laughs> shipped their bikes over. It's really amazing. And that's not an inexpensive undertaking, right? I mean, you really have to want to bring your bike here if you're going to ship your bike here from Germany. Right, right. There, there are people here today 
that have saved their every last nickel to come to Milwaukee. And why do they want to be in Milwaukee? To visit the Harley Davidson Museum. And do you hear, do you, do, do they share other impressions of Milwaukee with you, Tim, other than just the museum? Absolutely. I could not have gotten better reviews. Uh, at, you know, we celebrated the 120th over the summer here. That brought in a lot of international guests. And in general, just how warm and welcoming Milwaukeeans can be. And, and, and obviously, I'm a little biased. Because Harley Davidson is based here, it is one of the best, if not the best, motorcycle city in the world. We 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 love our Harleys. The police are always very kind to us, very gracious, uh, and the welcome. A a Carol, as you were talking about the hundredth, I can remember my boss Bill Davidson talking about those rides in that they did from all the corners of the of the country here, and the chills that he got on his arms as he was see seeing people on highway overhangs oh, yeah. welcome yeah. all those riders to Milwaukee. Yeah, you know, that and was you cool. know, that was very, very cool. And um, I also love the fact that when you have these benchmark times, these the hundredth or whatever, you always put together and you have a beautiful, like iconic motorcycle that you make for that event. And they are spectacular, spectacular. Definitely I, collector's items. We always pull one of those for the archives to keep at the museum here. Right. And and to it just as a we we only got about a, a minute and a half left Tim. If you're looking for a unique Christmas gift, you have a wonderful gift shop. You really do for men, women, kids, dogs. Yep. <laughs> we do. We got those right? covered too. Yes. I know. You got, everybody everybody can wear Harley gear <laughs> and be part of the Harley family. Where can people find Tim the listing of of all the events that are coming up? Visit hdmuseum.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all the socials. We'll keep you up to date and you won't be bored in Milwaukee. We've got lots on the calendar for you to enjoy here at the crossroads of Sticks and Canal. All right. Well, we might see you in a little bit for chili because now I am now I can't stop thinking about chili. <laughs> and to tomorrow's <laughs> event starts when again, Tim? When does tomorrow's uh, that'll be, event? That'll be 10 a.m. Okay, 10 a.m. Got All right. it. Sounds Perfect. good. Tim McCormick from the Harley Davidson Museum. Thank you so very much Thanks, for joining Tim. us. It was great. We have one more break before the noon news. Stay with us. You're listening to As Goes Wisconsin. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. <laughs> this was my son's favorite song. <laughs> Welcome back. There we go. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. Jane Matt Mayer in for Kristen Bry, Calvin yep. on the board, Carol Kane across from me in our studio in downtown Waukesha. Calvin, I wanted to let you know that Mark from the SAC texted in and complimented your music selections. I just told him that. I appreciate it a lot. Yes, it is. That's a that's a joyful thing for a producer, right? Of course, it definitely is. Yeah. Always <laughs> love. It's the one of the few things that I get control over, so I, I love to... I love when people enjoy it. Absolutely. It's so much fun. And it's a perfect setup for our next guest. There is a pet walk tomorrow, which, again, the weather may not be ideal, but it's a very special event. He is joining us from the Friends of Prairie Home Cemetery to talk about tomorrow's unveiling of the Canine Officer Monument that starts at 930. Joe Nicosia. Good morning, Joe. Hi. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell me, first of all, about the, the Friends of Prairie View Cemetery. What, do, what does that organization do? Well, the, uh, the Friends of Prairie Home Cemetery was, was actually founded in 2014. Uh, it, uh, they, they became a nonprofit organization in 2019. So they've been dedicated to the beautification, the historic preservation, uh, and the general maintenance and appreciation of the, of the, of the cemetery. They work really cl they work closely with the cemetery staff, the cemetery director, city officials, the uh, cemetery commission, and different different things that could be done in the cemetery that we would say is that are not covered by tax dollars. Sure. And so they raise they raise different monies uh, to do things like that. So tell me a little bit about this monument because I am so impressed always with the canine unit and how they. How they, you know, they stick with their officers and they do such an important job here in our area. So tell me, is this a canine that served or is it just a general canine monument? No, this is a, this is a, a few years back. There was a, if, if, if we had some of the friends made a suggestion, they said, why don't we support doing a canine mo monument to honor the canine officers? 
So it is for the dogs that are served. Uh, so we've worked on it. We worked with Blastcraft uh, Stones and Slinger. We worked uh, uh, through generous donations from many individuals. Uh, uh, Century Fence Company was a big donation, donator. And we were able to raise the, the money to buy a monument, uh, had it designed, uh, it was developed, it was put on, it put in the cemetery about two weeks ago, installed. And tomorrow morning, we decided we're going we're gonna to do the unveiling of it. The mayor is going to be there, assistant chief, and we're going to unveil it and dedicate it and present it to the cemetery. And that's going to start at 930 tomorrow, Joe, right? Yes, that's at 930 tomorrow morning. And, and then how, does the, how is the pet walk going to work? Well, the pet walk is unique. We've been running it for a few years. Uh, they come in. There is actually there is actually a walking tour of the cemetery. A lot of people don't realize the uh, cemetery is the history of the city written in stone. Absolutely. And, uh, so, so we have a lot of different places, stops they can see. A lot of people don't realize uh, some of the historic individuals that are interred there. So we have a walk. We also have uh, some pet games we set up. Uh, the city of Washington will have their uh, canine dog there. They do an electronics demonstration, and then we have uh, the counties bringing their dogs to do a, a, seek, a seek and find a demonstration. And we have a bake sale, and we have some uh, do a 50 50 raffle, a silent auction to start raising money for our next project. Joe Nicosia is our guest. He is telling us about the Prairie Home. He's up with the uh, Friends of Prairie Home Cemetery and the unveiling tomorrow of a monument to the canine officers right. who serve and who have served. And you saw a demonstration, Carol, on, on some canines. Uh, I did, units. and it was it was so impressive. There were three different dogs, and the Belgian Malinois was the one that was so impressive to me because the officer said, don't let this dog see me until I come out. And he came out in all the gear and the dog. All the padding. All the padding, and the dog just latched on and he was spinning around and this dog would not let go. <laughs> and it was such an interesting demonstration too, because he said, this dog will be with me if I stop you along the road. And he said, if you run, you can try, but she's been clocked at 35 miles an hour and she's going to catch you. And I was just like, wow, that's an impressive thing to know. So I, I, it was just, it's just so impressive what they can do. These dogs are just so unbelievably smart and capable and they protect their owners yes. and they're great. It's great. I'm so glad you've done this. And, and Joe, I want to say to you, you make such a good point about my father was a mortician. So I've always been fascinated with cemeteries and all those things, but you're absolutely right. When you say cemeteries are the city's history written in stone. Right? Yeah. No kidding. They are. They are. And uh, as Carol said about the, the, the demonstration with the canines, uh, the, I mean, I'm excited actually to see the demonstration about the electronics. These are canines that can sniff out, you know, electronic equipment anywhere. And that, that's going to be interesting. Wow. Very okay. interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. Well, well they, they all have very specific. That was what I thought was so interesting. They all have very specific jobs. Right. You know, like one does the drugs searches, one does ammunition searches. Yeah, one runs runs down suspects. Right, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, again, you can well, last year, go ahead, Joe. Last year they had a demonstration, uh, a seek and find, and an individual went and hid way in one corner of the cemetery. And they they, they had the dog in the other end, the uh, canine, and they had him uh, sniff this gentleman's hat. And he took off and made a beeline and went straight 80 acres across. Wow. Person hide behind it. 80 wow. acres. Wow. Well, that cemetery is almost 80 acres. Yeah, on an angle. You want, I'm like, wow. And you, how do you find him? <laughs> but it's well, very interesting to watch. Take your kids tomorrow. They Should will be, be fun. fascinated. Uh, it starts at 930 tomorrow at Prairie View Cemetery. The unveiling of the monument to the canine officer was, officers will start at 930. And then other activities yes. and the dog walk and all of that stuff. So thank you so much for joining us, Joe. I know this was really last minute. I appreciate you Thanks, Joe. making time for us. Thank you. Have a great thank day. You having me. Hope it great. Hope, sure. hope it goes really, really, really well tomorrow. Uh, just a couple of texts, texts I'm going to try to get to re real quickly. We just had Tim McCormick on from the Harley Davidson yes. Museum. He was talking about that deal that uh, four tickets for $15. Yes. A uh, uh, texter wants to know if that still applies for gold wing riders. I would think so. I would think across the board, that's I, what it is. He didn't, uh, Tim didn't uh, have any qualifications about that. No, so. no. And uh, Robin Allen checking in on the stream. Thank you so much, Robin. Says, you guys are so much fun. <laughs> are you actually in the studios on Wisconsin Avenue? Yes, we are. Yep. Eric next door has a great fish fry. 
And the walking tour tomorrow is great. They start at the chapel. Thank you so much, Robin. We really appreciate that. We appreciate Calvin for running the board. Carol Kane for being yep. here. Thank you so much to all of you for calling, for listening, for texting. Without you, basically, we are nothing. <laughs> I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Have a great weekend. And we will be back with you Monday morning starting at 10 a.m. Stay close uh, for the news. Coming up next, this is As Goes Wisconsin. You're listening to the Civic Media Radio Network.